So as I was developing the user profile functionality for Boxed Out, I realized that we don't have any logging in the app, which makes it difficult to actually debug and develop in. So I was going to change the video for the week for Boxed Out to be me setting up the logger and adding all the logs into the actual code base. Given that that would be super boring and the fact that I've always wanted to add logging functionality into the stack packages, I figured I might as well record a video of me adding logger generation into the stacked packages. So in this video, I take you through me adding a logger generator into the stacked packages. If I open up my current boxed out code base, you'll see that I have some functions that I moved in here that we would have used to create our user models on our Firebase database. And as you see, within these functions, I have all of these logs that I want to print out. This is when I realized that we have actually no logging set up throughout the entire app. If you head over to fullstacks.com and you search for logging, you'll get two different tutorials. There's one for setting up a logger, and this is the logging code that we will be generating today. The logger has a specific format of printing out the class name that it's in as well as the function name that the log is from. The only part we will change is this get logger function name which will sit as the log helper in the logger config. And this leads us to the code as far as what I've implemented in the stack generator because I started recording after I started the implementation. The first thing I created was a logger config. The only value that we pass in here is the log helper name, and that would be the get logger that I showed you in the tutorial earlier. I've also implemented the logger config resolver already, and all that that does is read the stack app annotation and then get the value that we are looking for. It returns a logger config, and we start by checking if the logger is defined. If it is defined, we create a logger config object and we pass back the string value from the log name helper as the log helper name. To give you an idea of how this will be used, we have now a logger property on the stacked app annotation that takes in a stacked logger object. We'll give that a value for the log helper name where you can rename the log helper function in case it clashes with any functions in your code base. And then for the actual logger functionality, I have built a logger in all of our client apps which uses this exact same code. We have a Google Cloud logging output target as well, which I won't be adding right now, but it's already implemented in our code bases. So when we need to add that functionality, I'll simply copy it over and explain in the readme how to use that. That is everything that I've done so far, and then I made use of it in the stack logger generator class. We'll start now by doing the actual code generation for the logger file. In the logger class generator, I created a new class called logger class generator. This extends our base generator that we created in one of our earlier episodes. And I simply pass in the logger config that I have created. You might ask why I don't just include the logger functionality in the stacked package. Number one is the fact that stacked already depends on a few different packages and I don't want to add another one. Similar to what we did with our stacked locator in this situation where we just wrapped the get it functionality and included get it in our package. I didn't want to include a logger in case a user is already using a different logger in their projects. I would also not be able to exclude the logging functionality if a user doesn't want it. And so adding it into the generator is the best approach because the code will be written into the code base and you can choose to add the package required or not add it. For the logger class generator, we will create a future that returns a string called generate. And since we already have all of the code required that needs to be generated, in this case, we can simply copy all of the code and do a single string replace when we generate our code. Instead of adding that big string literal into the logger class generator, I created a new class called logger class content. And in this class, I created a constant string called logger class content that takes a literal string value using the triple single quotes. Then I went through and made sure that I escaped all of the dollar signs to make sure that it's not being interpreted and is actually just showing up as a dollar sign when we write this out. And since we know the only thing that we need to replace is the name of the logger constructor helper, 
I created a new constant string called logger helper key name and I gave it the name log helper name. Then at the bottom of my class content, I simply interpreted that log helper key name for the logger function name. This will most likely be the simplest generator class you will ever see. I will simply return a future dot value and then pass it the logger class content. I will then call replace first on that logger class content string and the from value will pass in the logger helper key name and for the to value we will pass in the log helper name from the logger config. The next step is to add our builder to the builder.dart file so it can be exported in our builder.yaml file. We'll use the same signature as the rest of the generators where we'll create a function called stacked logger generator that returns a type builder and takes in builder options. We'll return a library builder and for the first value of that library builder constructor, we'll pass in the stacked logger generator. Then we'll supply the generated extensions and as we know that would be dot logger dot dot. So after we've added the generator to the builder itself, we need to add that to the build.yaml file so that it can be exported correctly. I simply copied the code above and then I went to the function name which we want to match in the builder factories as well as the actual name of the logger. And the last thing to update there is to change the dot form dot dot to dot logger dot dot. And then the next thing to do would be to add the new functionality into the stacked app. So as you can see, the stacked logger doesn't exist. So we need to create a new logger annotation called stacked logger. We already know what values need to go in here. We want to pass in a property called log helper name that is string with a default value of get logger. Once we've added that, we need to also then extend our stacked app annotation and add the stacked logger nullable called logger. Then we can go ahead and add the logger annotations to our stacked annotations. And there's one thing that I forgot, which is to make the constructor a constant constructor. Once we are done with that, the example that we typed up earlier now will be fine at compile time. So I'm just going to do a flutter pub git and then we'll run this code to see if it actually works. We'll do our basic flutter pub run build run a build and we'll pass in delete conflicting outputs. The generator completed, but as you can see, there were a lot of formatting and syntax errors in the dot file that was actually generated. When I opened the logger.dot file, I saw that a lot of the code was put onto new lines. And I immediately knew what the problem was because there's a backslash in the code. And so it's using that backslash in as an actual new line character. So we have to go back to the template string and we have to go and escape all of the single backslashes in the code. So as you see here, that backslash in is actually being used as a new line character. So when we render it out, it splits that line up into two strings because we are indicating to the code that it is a new line. So what we need to do to fix that is simply just add another backslash in front of the single backslash. Once we do that for all the new line characters, we can run the same code again. And now we can see that it completes without any syntax errors in the dot files. This is a good point to get to. So next up, we'll need to use this logger in the example app for stacked and see if it actually does what we wanted to do. Before I tested out everything, I did some package maintenance by just updating the version numbers and updating our change log just so that I can have a detailed change log in case I add more additional things as we are developing this functionality. And then I went through the readme and I updated that with the logger functionality as well as a short and detailed guide for how to use that in your package. This basically says you can pass in a new logger into the stack app annotation that will generate a logger file for you. You will then need to go and add the logger package into your pub spec. And then after that, you can use the logger by calling git logger or whatever name you passed into your log helper name. 
and then it will print out the logs in a certain format. So before I push up any of these packages, we need to make sure that it works. In the example app for stacked, I'm gonna change all of those print statements to use the new logger, and it should be printing out the class name, the exact class name, home view model, as well as the function that it's being called from when we run this code. And when I did run this code, I realized that it was completely broken. The only thing that worked was that it printed out the class name, but everything else is pretty much not usable in terms of a logging package. And after some debugging, I realized that the regular expression I used to extract the function name from the logs has some backslashes in it, meaning that it is actually using that as an escape character in the string and so the regex that's being printed out when we render our template is not the correct regular expression and once i figured that out i went back to the stacked logger template i then found the regular expression that we use and i added a backslash to each of the single backslashes that we have then i rebuilt all of the outputs again to get the new version of the logger generator and when I ran the code this time around, you can see that it actually printed out the correct formatted logs that we want, which is the type of log, which is indicated by the emoji, the class name, and then the function name that was actually being called from. Actually looking at these values now, that is incorrect. The function name should be printed out when there's an empty string supplied, and that is not doing that at the moment. <laughs> well, this video has been recorded already, so I will go and fix it. When you see this video and you know about this functionality, it should be fixed and you won't have to worry about seeing the wrong info in this video. The next episode in the Boxed Out series, we will add the user profiles and I will also add the new logger functionality in there so that we can use that to log out everything that we are doing thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next episode of boxed out where we make a tiny bit more progress than we did today bye bye